Jesus, Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to Take my hand, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry. Hear I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. In the darkest of night, if my hope has taken flight. Show me where my hope belongs And when your grace will see me through I will know it's because of you Take my hand, precious Lord May the salvation of Jesus be yours. Please, Please be with you. Please be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Okay, I'm doing it again. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Have a good day. All right, go ahead. Good morning. Welcome to Second Congregational First Presbyterian Church where we serve to energize downtown Rockford and beyond with God's grace. My name is Ann Stites, and I am humbled and honored to serve this congregation as moderator. Meditations at the Mural will be held on August 11th at 9 a.m. and August 20th at 7 p.m. Socially distanced chairs will be provided, or you may bring your own. Masks or face shields are required. VBS will be held on Sundays from 9 to 9.30 via Zoom throughout the month of August. If you haven't already signed up, please call the church and VBS packages will then be delivered to your door. Serious soup has begun. Warm lunches are being provided in to-go bags. There will also be some tables set up outside for the guests to sit at as they eat. Thank you. All right, kids. Uh, good morning. Um, just come gather around. We're going to watch and see a story from Luke 8 when Jesus calms the storm. So let's see what happens. One day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, just let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out And while they were sailing, he fell asleep. And a gale swept down on the lake, and the boat was filled with water, and they were in danger. <laughs> Just they went to him 
and woke him up shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased and there was a calm. And Jesus said to them, where is your faith? Where is your faith? And they were afraid and amazed. <laughs> and, and they said to one another, Who is this that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? Who is the skid? What's he gonna do? Who is the skid? What's he gonna do? <laughs> Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on the Lord's name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing, sing to God, God. Sing, sing praises to God. Tell of all the wonderful works we have seen. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord. Seek the strength of the Lord. Seek God's presence continu continuously. Remember, Remember, too, all of those wonderful works of Jesus, the miracles and wisdom of his words. Come, let us seek God's will for our lives together. Hey, welcome to worship on this slightly crazy for us. We're going to try to get the right spot. Sunday morning, we, uh, our sound system's down, so as you can see, we are actually standing, I am standing really close to the camera and hoping that my voice is being picked up by a computer microphone, which was like plan maybe D, uh, so sorry for the delay this morning. Um, we got to use some of our videos right away, uh, and right now we'll look right to the sermon, do a prayer, and call it a day. <laughs> Let me open us up in prayer. Gracious and loving God, you are always good to us. Always, even in the middle of a storm, even when things don't go quite our way, you are with us, comforting us, holding our hand, and showing us the way. We thank you, O oh God, for your love, for your care, for your mercy and for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're following on our Bible school themes uh, this month, and do I have a story for you. Last week we heard about the murderous Saul who sees the blight, bright light of the Holy Spirit and changes from hunting Jesus' follower, followers to being a Jesus follower. And just as zealous as he was in his pursuit of Christians, he is in proclaiming Jesus' name. While the religious leaders, who to this day are not known for new ideas, creative thinking, they didn't really like the idea that Jesus was the fulfillment of God's prophecy. Paul was messing up the status quo and he had to go. The Roman government didn't know what to do with him, though, because he hadn't broken any laws, although it was strange that he was proclaiming the dead Jesus of Nazareth instead of the king Caesar. But that was too, not too much of a threat at that point. Paul is taken captive. He bounces from this court to that because no one wants to convict him of anything and spark riots among the Christians. Finally, he convinces someone in the system to take him to Rome and be tried before Caesar once and for all. At least then he can tell Caesar about Jesus and maybe finally be released. But unfortunately, this journey is by boat and it's already into November when the stormy seas come. Paul warns the captain at one point not to continue, but he does, and the ship is being tossed to and fro in the waters. And if you love Mediterranean geography, you should read this whole chapter. For those of us without that map imprinted in our heads, I'm just going to jump right to Acts 27, verse 18. Just know that there's a storm that's been bouncing them from island to island. Hear now the word of the Lord. 
We were being pounded by the storm so violently that on the next day they began to throw cargo overboard. And on the third day, with their own hands, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest raged, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul then stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and have not, and not set sail from Crete and thereby avoided this damage and loss. I urge you now to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. The last night there stood by me an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before the emperor. And indeed, God has granted safety to all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, men. For I have faith in God and that it will be exactly as I have been told, but we will have to run aground on some island. This may have made Paul feel better, but the crew is freaking out. You see, it was Roman's law that if they lost a prisoner, the guard has to take his place. And that never ended well. So the crew is running around trying to lower the safety boats and get away, but they get caught. And Paul is confident that if the soldiers leave the boat, they will not be saved. You can hear here the physical and spiritual salvation being mixed. But picking back up with the story, just before daybreak, Paul urged all of them to take some food, saying, Today is the 14th day that you have been in suspense and remaining without food, having eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take some food, for it will help you survive. For none of you will lose a hair from your heads. And after he had said this, he took bread and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. And then all of them were encouraged and took food for themselves. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. After they had satisfied their hunger, they lightened the ship by throwing the wheat into the sea. The next morning, it happens just as Paul said it was. The ship runs into the land, and all the soldiers and prisoners are safe. And Paul eventually makes it to Rome, where he is placed on house arrest and preaches from the comfort of his home. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray again for illumination. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts, come to us now, calm our storms, and show us the way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Excuse me for a second, one just direct comment. I'm wondering if you, my lovely and precious children, could move a little bit that way. That would be so awesome. Maybe go sit over there um, in that pew, but don't go too far away. All right, thanks, and sorry about that. Uh, where were we? Don't go too far away. I have stories about you. So when we moved from Rockford, or moved to Rockford from Philadelphia, our oldest child turned six the day we arrived. And we prepped her for everything we could think of, and they tried to answer all of her questions. Yes, there is ice cream in Illinois. No, the tigers do not roam the streets. Yes, you can go to school. There are parks and playgrounds and a beautiful river. But we forgot to tell her about tornadoes. We had been here for only a couple of months when the tornado sirens went off right about bedtime. The middle of an emergency is not the best time to prepare a kindergartner for what's happening. Andy and I are ourselves gathering flashlights, looking for a radio, reminding ourselves of what we are supposed to do as all and doing all of that, trying to comfort our children. We finally settled down. The sirens sound her all clear. And the six-year-old says, I just want to go back to Philadelphia where they only have hurricanes. <laughs> storms can be scary. And I think metaphorical storms are scarier than physical storms. Or maybe they just happen more often. We have no shortage of metaphorical storms right now. The coronavirus pandemic, civil and racial unrest, and all the pressure and decisions that come from all of that, 
not to mention our typical life storms that are ongoing, sickness and death and divorce, though sometimes that is a blessing in disguise, losing a job, broken relationships, the list is endless, and we all know this list. In our Bible lesson for today, we see the Apostle Paul mirroring Jesus' story about being in storms. Paul is the calm one, the one who is confident that all will be well, that God will save, and that the future is bright. This is intentional. The author of Luke Acts wants us to see Jesus' image reflected in Paul. Now, Paul doesn't calm the storm and make it go away like Jesus could, but he does get a promise from God that he will make it through, that everyone will make it through. Paul does this by sleeping, praying, breaking bread, and being close to God. And so here's the bottom line. When storms come, we can either race around on deck trying to save ourselves, or we can sit and partake in God's holy meal, pray, and become more like Jesus. You can either race around on the deck of drama, trying to save yourself, or you can sit still, partake in God's holy meal, pray, and become more like Jesus. Every day we have this choice of faith. Will we choose to sit still and allow Jesus to handle the worry, the drama, the pain? Or will we allow ourselves to get caught up in the storm. The choice of faith is real, and God awaits on our answer day by day. And oh, what a blessing it is to allow God to love us, to comfort us, to show us the way towards peace and love and justice. Our God is so good to us to give us the choice of faith, to give us the option to live in harmony with God and to do God's work and will in this world. We could end on this point, at this individualistic understanding of faith, and we would not be wrong. It is true that God wants each of us to choose to love and serve the Lord every day. But for Paul, salvation was communal. It required everyone's effort and faith, and it gathered everyone together. This wasn't a story of Paul being saved off of a ship. No, this was a story of Paul and everyone who was with him being saved. It wasn't in God's plan to only save one person, but the whole boat just as it is God's plan to save the whole world. Once we are calmed by faith, prayed up and saved, reflecting Jesus, God uses us to save the world. When my, my then six-year-old knew about hurricanes in Philadelphia, because we had weathered a couple together, now, Philly is about one hour inland, so by the time a hurricane reached us, it had long been downgraded to a tropical storm, but whoa, those are some winds and rains. And did you know that hurricanes spin off tornadoes? I did not know that growing up here in Illinois. But once when this oldest child of mine was about two years old, Andy flew from Philly to Missouri to, Missouri to visit his sister. We knew a hurricane was approaching, but like tornadoes, they usually go in a different direction or fizzle out. Not Hurricane Irene. As you might remember, it made major landfall. Hanukkah and I spent much of the night in the basement awake. We returned to our bed at some time, and as we woke on, of course, a Sunday morning, scurrying wearily to get ready for church, I noticed that everything in the basement was floating. We had just moved into our house not that long ago, and so the basement was just a pile of boxes with no matter of order or importance, and now it was all floating. I grabbed a couple things that looked like they shouldn't be wet, and I ran off to church defeated and without my partner to help. I don't know what my retired colleague, Mike Pulsifer, saw in my face that morning at church, 
Perhaps he knew that my exhausted self, with a small child propped up on one hip, was not going to be able to shop back the basement and move everything up one floor. He came over and took care of it all. He spent the entire afternoon calming my storm. I could not get off the deck racing around in my head, so he, with the reflection of Jesus and the steadiness of the Holy Spirit, took care of me and my family. Sometimes you cannot imagine a way out of your own storm, and you need someone else to come alongside you to point the way toward Jesus and walk with you until the waters ease. Paul shows us that both are true. We have a choice. Do we race around on the deck, allowing the storm to have its way, or do we quiet ourselves in prayer and sleep? becoming more like Jesus in order to calm and have the perspective of salvation. It is always true that our lives are not our own and that we should allow others to come alongside and be Jesus for us and that we can be Jesus for others. The salvation of the Lord is rich and deep. May we all experience this today and all days. Thanks be to God. And now if we can, I'm wondering if, Valerie, are you still back there? Would you um, be willing to play that hymn on the organ to see if we can hear it? Awesome. We're going to test it and see if we can play our opening hymn now on the organ, and then we will move to prayer. Thanks be to God. seems to get crazy sometimes. We love the smooth times when all is well, but Lord, 
we have serious problems with wind and waves. We want you to fill our sails with the lovely breeze that guides our little boats across the glassy sea. But you know that life isn't just glassy seas and gentle breezes. Sometimes things get rough. Help us place our trust in you during all these rough times. You call to us to reach out, to take our focus off our own panic and place our trust in your love. Then you ask us to reach out to others with the same kind of love and compassion that you have given us today. We have come to you with burdens and cares. Our seas are not calm, but you offer to us a lifeline. Be with us, guide our lives, give us courage and hope, strengthen us to truly be your disciples. In Jesus' name, and let us together pray the prayer that he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time in our service for our weekly offering. There are a few ways that you can give of yourself to the church. The first is by mailing in your offering, or if you'd rather, our text to give is live. Just follow the directions on our webpage. You can send your prayers in to either myself or, Pe or Reverend Rebecca. Make yourself known to our community by, again, contacting myself, Reverend Rebecca, or the church office. We will now take today's offering. Light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. today of storms is while this there was a storm in here with no sound system and so our hope and prayer is that the Holy Spirit uh, uses the message of love and peace and joy to reach all of you know that if you are in the storm of your life to sit still to pray to become more like Jesus or to invite someone else into your life to be Jesus for you and as a reminder to all of us to be Jesus for those in our lives who are in the midst of storms. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.
Hugs in the door. Hugs in the door. Have a great day.